artists and welcome to day 80 of the 365 day epic journey. I'm Delene FM and today we're going to have another look at solvents and medium following a bit of confusion regarding the layering process, the drying process and some folks have asked which oils can be used instead of others because of availability in their specific area. So I'm going to just quickly run through the different oils and then I'm going to show you what I do and what the alternatives are. Alright, first of all, let's talk about solvents just quickly, um, although this lesson is specifically about oils, I just want to mention solvents because it is something that you use in conjunction with your medium. Now, the solvent that you use is artist turpentine. You do get um, mineral turpentine and you get odorless mineral turpentine. What we are looking for is artist turpentine, which you can buy from your art store. And you can also get genuine turpentine and pure turpentine. They are all the same thing. Artist terps, genuine terps and pure terps is all the same thing. You might find that the genuine terps or the pure terps are, can be slightly more yellow to the, uh, visually in the bottle. Don't worry about the slight yellowness. It doesn't affect your paint in any way. And um, the only reason it's there is because Artist turpentine has gone through an additional process to remove completely all the sulfur that is in the product after the distillation process. Turpentine is actually made from the pulp of a pine tree. Sometimes they use other trees, but it's usually the pine tree. And it can result in some sulfur in the product. Now for artist turpentine, they will remove that product. But for genuine turps or pure turps, they may not go as far as removing all of it completely. So it might have a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. But that's not a biggie and it doesn't affect the oil that we use and frankly to buy genuine terps or pure terps is slightly cheaper than to go to your art store and buy artist terps however be very careful do not use mineral turpentine it's a completely different product it is actually a byproduct of the petroleum industry so it's much more of a chemical product um, it's not as effective either as a genuine pure terps or artist terps and I'm including into this the uh, commonly used odorless mineral turpentine. Now if you go to your art store you will find a product there called odorless mineral turpentine that is used by artists because of the lack of smell. I don't like it because it is still mineral turpentine. Mineral turpentine is not biodegradable whereas artist turpentine, genuine turpentine or pure turpentine, same product, is biodegradable. All right. Mineral turpentine, odorless mineral turpentine has gone through an additional process to remove the smell from it because it can be quite noxious, as can artist turpentine. And the thinking that is, is if you can't smell it, that it's not dangerous to you, that is not the case at all. If you can't smell it, you just can't feel or smell the, the danger. I prefer to smell my turpentine. I know when I can smell it, I know that I need to ventilate my room a little bit more. So. I don't agree with odorless, but that's purely, this is purely my own opinion, folks. I don't like odorless mineral turpentine. I prefer to smell what I'm, what I'm breathing in so that I know that I'm breathing in, breathing it in. And I also don't like to use mineral turpentine on my paintings, uh, because it does leave a residue. Now, that is arguable. There are a lot of artists that won't agree with me, so it's up to you to make your own decision. Okay, mediums is what you will mix your paint with to thin them down for various different reasons, usually to alter the drying speed or to alter the glossiness of your painting and, um, and to alter the feel of your paint in your brush. Sometimes if you want to do thick impasto paints, you're not going to add anything. Other times you're going to want to thin it down because you need a softer paint because you're working with more detail. And in very high detail, you need a relatively fluid paint. So you're going to need, depending on what you're doing, you're going to need at some point to mix your paint with a medium. Now, there are lots of different mediums available. I certainly don't have them all up here, um, but I've just put on the most common ones. And I'll go through them quickly. Stand Oil has the very slowest drying time. It slightly yellows the whites and the blues. It is therefore used mainly for the lower layers where it doesn't really matter if your blues and your whites are slightly yellowed because you're going to have additional layers on top of it. It does give your paint a particularly thick buttery consistency because it's a very thick oil. A stand oil is just linseed oil that has gone through a process that it's, it's just stood for longer so it stands and the oil thickens up and it's got less yellowing properties than, than um, normal linseed oil would have so it only slightly yellows your paint. 
The next one up the line in terms of drying speed is poppy seed oil. It's slightly quicker drying than stand oil. It's still a very slow drying oil though and it won't yellow your whites and blues. Safflower oil, it dries slightly quicker so it's somewhere in the middle. Um, it's a slower drying oil though. It does not yellow your whites and blues. It's very very pale oil. It doesn't have a lot of its own color so it's less likely to yellow your whites and your blues. Now of course your blues are, I mentioned the blues because if your blues are slightly yellowed they will go slightly greenish. Linseed oil, refined linseed oil we're talking about now, not raw linseed oil folks, it's refined linseed oil. It has a medium drying time so it's somewhere in the middle in terms of drying time but it has quite a tendency to yellow your whites and your blues. You can minimize the effects of the yellowing that it has on your painting by leaving it to dry in a well lit room overnight or outdoors in the sun um, to help that uh, linseed oil to burn off the yellow as quickly as possible so that it doesn't affect your uh, whites and blues as much as what it would otherwise. But it will still have a slightly yellowing effect on your painting. In fact of all the oils it probably will have the most yellowing effect on your painting. Walnut oil has a quicker drying time. It does have a very slight yellowing effect, not as much as linseed oil though. It's a slightly brownish oil, um, but it does dry a lot clearer than linseed oil does. And then of course we come to our Elkid resin, which is a resin, strictly speaking it's not an oil, but it it's also comes from the uh, resin of a tree. And you can get it in various forms, various thicknesses, but in terms of the oil that we would, we would use for painting, it would be very liquid, it would be pourable, but it's much thicker than any of the other oils. It does not yellow your whites and your blues, and it is very quick in terms of its drying time. It will dry quite sticky very quickly, and by the following day, depending on your paint thickness, you may already be able to touch, it may be already be touch dry or maybe just a little bit sticky. It, however, because it's a resin and not strictly speaking an oil, it does create the strongest paint film. So it's really, really good for protecting your paint long term from being bumped or scratched. So it does create a really good, strong paint film. Now my choice is to simplify all of this, because really there's just so much to choose from. My personal choices are one slow drying oil and one fast drying oil. I choose the slow drying oil to be safflower oil, A because of availability, it's just easier to lay your hands on than something like poppy seed or stand oil, um, and it doesn't yellow the whites and blues so much, so I like the idea of the safflower oil. I like the Elkid resin because I like the way that it makes my paint feel, it's very quick drying time, so I can use it when I want paintings to dry quickly, and it doesn't um, yellow the whites and blues, and of course there's the strongest film that it can create. So between those two oils, I personally feel that you have the best of both worlds. Neither of them are going to yellow your whites and blues, you've got one that is slow drying and one that is quick drying, and you can mess around with the ratios that you use and we'll follow through that little process a little bit down the line. Now before I get to that though, let's have a look at, we're just going to quickly revisit fat over lean, or lean to fat, or however you want to call it. When you add solvent, we're talking terps now, when you add solvent to your paint, your paint is going to become less oily because the solvent will break down the oil content, so you're going to be diluting your paint, making it less oily. When you add medium, you're also diluting your paint, but you're making it more oily. So there's not going to be any breaking down of the oils because of the lack of solvent, it's medium, so it's an oily substance, so on a molecular level your oiliness is going to be increased even though you're diluting your paint. It's not about the amount of paint that is in it, it's about the amount of oil that is in it. Okay, so solvent, as I've got you on the right hand side, solvent is to thin your paint towards the lean side, it is also to wash your brushes. Medium, however, is to thin your paint towards the fat side, in other words, to, towards the more oily side. It is to alter your drying times, different oils, as we discussed above. And it will also change the glossiness of your finished product, depending on which oil you choose to use. Some oils are more satin finish, some oils are more glossy finish. And then again, it's going to have to be something that you mess around with until you find the oil that best suits your um, requirements in terms of the glossiness. Personally, I like the Elkid oil because it gives a sort of a, a semi-satin finish. Linseed oil can be very glossy. Stand oil is extremely glossy, almost enamely in its finish. 
All right, now let's talk about my favorite combinations to paint with. Now, as I said above, I only buy safflower oil and alkyd resin. Those are the two that I choose to use, and these are the combinations I use them in depending on what I'm wanting to paint and, and which layers I'm painting it. Now what I'll do is I'll actually get myself four little squeezy bottles, and in each of those squeezy bottles I will mix the pre-mix the, the uh, medium solutions that I want to work with, and I'll label the bottles. So I don't go and mix every time I want to paint. I don't go and remix. I have these things already mixed, and every now and again, you know, when they finish, I'll just wash the bottle out with a bit of turps, and then refill it with that particular solution that I'm wanting to paint with. All right, so the leanest version will be my 10% alkyd oil and 90% turps. I just add a little bit of alkyd resin to it because I want to give the pigment some more binder because if you put a lot of turps and no oil then you can actually break the paint down to a point where you're going to not have it stick into your canvas as well. So I just return a little bit of oil to the mix to make sure that my adhesion to the canvas is still well maintained. And then you can, if you want to, go for an in-between mix. I don't, however, I jump straight to 50-50, 50% oil, in this case alkyd, and 50% turps, and then I'll do the rest of my painting with those, with that particular solution, the 50-50. I do, however, use a 75%... Oh, look, I've made a mistake. I'll correct that when I put it onto the Facebook page. I do use a 75% oil, 25% turps mix, but yes, I do sometimes use a 75% oil and 25% turps mix, and this is for when I'm doing glazing. Now, in the case of my 75% oil, what I'll do then is I will keep some alkyd in the mix. So I will have 25% alkyd and 50% safflower, which will be a total of 75% oil, and then of course my 25% turps. And then of course the last combination will just be 100% alkyd oil. And again, as I go down, I will explain to you what I use these different oils for. So how do I use the different oil and solvent ratios? Well, for glazed paintings, for my very first imprimatura layer, I will use the 10% alkyd, 90% turps mix. For my grisaille layer, I will use 50% alkyd, 50% turp, so my oil content is getting uh, heavier. Remember, you've got to go through from your leanest to your fattest mixture through your layers. So as you can see, the turps is getting less and the oil is getting more as we're going along. Then on all the glaze layers, I'll use the 75-25% mix. Remember, that's 25% turps, 25% alkyd, 50% safflower oil, making a total of 75% oil. 25% turfs. So I'll use that on everything that I do. Coating my canvas, um, mixing with my paint, glazing onto the, everything. I'll use that particular mixture for everything that I do right up until I'm com I've completed my painting. So right up until the last layer. The final thing that I will do is after this painting is now completely dry, I will oil out the painting. Now, oiling out is something different from varnishing, folks. Oiling out is literally just coating your canvas with a thin layer of oil uh, to give it a an even, an all-over even sheen. And in my case, I prefer to use 100% of the alkyd resin. You can use any of the oils for this. I prefer to use the alkyd resin. And the reason I like to use the alkyd resin is A, it's quick drying, and B, it gives you the strongest film, and C, it doesn't affect the, um, the whites and the blues, all the reasons that we spoke about above. One thing that I must mention at this point is that any of the oils, let me just go back up to the top to show you, any of these oils in the mediums can be mixed one with the other. They are all interchangeable, they are all able to be used together in the same mix or one on top of the other in different layers. It really doesn't matter. They're completely interchangeable. Okay, so I've talked about how I would use it for glaze paintings. I've literally got all four of my mixes there and I use them at different times during throughout the glazing uh, painting process. But now for paintings that are not glazed, in other words, your normal everyday impasto painting, you're still going to have an underpainting. For my underpainting, whether it's an imprimatura layer or whatever the case may be, I will still use my 10%, 90%. Then for the rest of the painting, I will use my 50-50. Folks, you can, if you want to, have a 25% over 75% oil to turps at this point. I don't worry about that. 
I just go straight to the 50-50. As long as my oil content is getting heavier and my terps content is getting lighter throughout the painting, it doesn't really worry me exactly, you know, I'm going up in little increments. I just go straight to 50-50 and I use it on all my layers after that. And then again, the final oiling out layer, I will use a 100% Elkid. I just want to mention to you at this place all the di different brands of Elkid because that has been a little bit of confusion to some people. Um, Winter and Newton will call theirs Liquin. That is a brand name. Uh, Dollar will call theirs Artist Medium. Zelkin will call theirs Zelkol. I'm trying to think of some of the others. I'm not sure. But folks, all of those things are all Elkid mediums. Now, in the case of Artist Medium, uh, that's a dollar product. I've noticed that don't in the bottle that I've seen, they don't have a list of ingredients at the back. But on, I know on Liquid and on Zelkol and on some of the others, they will actually tell you that it is Elkid Medium uh, on the back on the ingredients. So it's, if you're in any doubt, just make sure that you get one that actually lists Elkid resin as the ingredient in the product. My personal preference is the liquid from Winsor & Newton or the Zalcol from Zalkin. The Dala one uh, I will admit to not having used. The Artiste one I found very soft. Okay, I just wanted to talk about the difference between oiling out and varnishing. I have mentioned that I use a Elkid resin, 100% Elkid resin to do oiling out. Now oiling out is not the same thing as varnishing, folks. Oiling out is literally just to give your paint an even sheen over it because you'll find that your, some paints will dry duller than others depending on what oil you've used and what pigments you've used. So I like to oil out to give it an even sheen over the whole thing. Um, but that is not varnishing. Oiling out will protect your painting from scratch damage, particularly if you use an Elkin resin. And it will give you a surface that you can um, wash with warm soapy water, you can dust it down. It protects your painting quite nicely, but over a very, very long period of time, for archival reasons, it is always best to varnish your painting. And of course, if you're selling your paintings, it's a good idea to varnish them to give your clients the best product possible. But by the same token, you cannot varnish a painting immediately after finishing. You can oil it out immediately after finishing it, but you can't varnish it because varnishing will have a different drying time to the oils and resins which mean that you're going to start messing with your fat over lean if you start using them straight away and, and your painting surface is going to crack over time. So varnishing is something that should be left for months if not even as long as a year after you've painted it. Which can sometimes be a little bit difficult if you're selling a painting and it's within the first year of it having been painted and you don't have time to varnish it. I do know some artists that will sell with their painting, they will sell you a bottle of varnish so that you can get it varnished once a year or so has passed. So that is one way that you can get around it. We are going to be talking about varnishing in a later tutorial. We will discuss the different types of varnishes and how one can actually varnish and which varnishes are going to give you the best finish for your requirements. Artists, I hope that this has made it a little bit clearer. Now please if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to ask me. This can be confusing if you um, are starting oil painting for the first time or if you've not used the different oils and mediums together in the past. It is however highly worth the effort. You will definitely make a massive difference to your painting finish and the quality of your finished product. If you just take a little bit of time to understand this a bit better. I think if you break it down to the the one or two oils that you prefer to use and do what I do and mix them in different quantities depending on the use that you're going to be having it for. You can put them in little squeezy bottles and actually label them. You can label them Imprimatura layer mix or Grisale layer mix or whatever it is that you actually want to use that particular mix for. And then um, it makes it much easier, number one, and number two, your finished product will be given the best chance it can of long-term survival and good quality. So thank you for joining me on day 80 in this little recap of some of the things that I've been talking about over over the, the last 79 days in all the videos. Please feel free to drop me a line with questions or comments. Please also feel free to share this video and go to the YouTube channel to catch up and I will see you tomorrow in day 81. Thanks again artists!
Have a good day. Bye. That's what you want to do.